Five interesting facts from mass and balance. Let's go! Fact number one. Flight crew and cabin crew have different standard masses. The standard mass for flight crew is 85 kilos and the standard mass for cabin crew is only 75 kilos. And there's actually a reason, a by now almost historical reason for it. You see, back in the day before the age of iPads and electronic flight bags in general, pilots had to carry all their documentation and especially all their charts in paper form, which was a huge, huge weight addition. Nowadays, of course, it's not as relevant anymore, but that is the reason why there is a 10 kilo difference between the standard mass of flight crew and cabin crew. Fact number two, aircraft mass limitations. A big part of mass and balance is obviously calculating the mass of an aircraft. And the reason why you do this is to make sure that you're within limits for all the different limitations that the airframe has. For example, you have zero fuel mass, which is the mass of the aircraft without any usable fuel, or takeoff mass, which is the mass at takeoff, or landing mass, the mass at landing. And you have to make sure that you're within limits for all of them. You can't just pick one you like, but rather you have to check that you're within the maximum zero fuel mass, you're within the maximum takeoff mass, and within the maximum landing mass. A big part of mass and balance really is just calculating how much traffic load, so the amount of passengers and cargo you can take before exceeding any of those limits. Fact number three. Aircraft have to be weighed in a hangar. Although aircraft are manufactured to really high precision nowadays, not every aircraft weighs exactly the same. So before entry into service, every airframe has to get weighed. And the regulations actually state that it has to be done in an enclosed building. So most of the time a hangar. Airlines or the operator has to um, weigh the aircraft every four years after that as well if they're just using um, the single weight of the aircraft and if they're using so-called fleet masses, so using an average of the entire fleet of this specific aircraft type, then every single aircraft has to be weighed every nine years. Fact number four. You have to do mass and balance calculations before every flight. There's not much to add to that really, um, except that it's really important to do mass and balance calculations before every flight. Because like I said previously, if you exceed a limit, it's not going to be a good day. Your takeoff distance might be longer, you might not reach the required climb rate, or even worse, if you're completely out of balance, the aircraft might even be uncontrollable. So making sure that you're within mass and balance limitations before every flight is absolutely essential. Fact number five. Load has to be secured in a way that it cannot shift or move during flight. I'd say that should also not be a huge surprise for anybody, but loads on an aircraft have to be secured in a way that even in severe turbulence or other unusual attitudes, the load should not shift during flight. And the reason is that if the load shifts during flights, all of your mass and balance calculations can go out the window again. Because for example, if the entire load shifts to the back of the aircraft, you will for sure exceed the CG limits or the center of gravity limits of the aircraft. And that might mean that you actually lose control. So loads really have to be secured tightly to the airframe. And also, of course, in a way that doesn't cause damage to the airframe. And that's it for today, five facts from mass and balance. I hope you enjoyed. It was a bit of a shorter and quicker video, but it's also quite a short and quick subject. I hope you learned something. See you next time. Thank you for watching. This was a really confusing outro. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.